In this video, we'll continue the um, solutions to the sample midterm exam. And this particular video will cover the problem 2, which is on your forward converter. So the forward converter given, um, we have all the three turns given in primary reset and in secondary. Um, we are also given the switching frequency and the primary side inductance which could be used to calculate the magnetizing current on the primary side. Um, we are also given the load resistance and the output uh, filter inductance. Um, so the part A requires uh, us to calculate the um, the maximum possible output voltage V out in steady state. So note that we are not given the duty ratio um, and even if it is given we don't know if that is the one that will result in the maximum output voltage. Um, in fact what we want is the D max. So let's go ahead and calculate the, the D max and by noting that the N primary is not equal to N reset. N primary is 10 whereas N reset is 15 turns. Therefore, we know that D max is not going to be 0.5. Uh, it needs to be calculated. So we have an equation that relates the D max to this uh, specific turns ratio in primary and reset. And that formula was um, um, N primary over N reset. Um, equals D max over 1 minus D max. So this is what we had in the notes. So we know that N primary over N reset is 10 over 15 for this given transformer and that is equal to D max over 1 minus D max. Okay, or cross multiplying we get uh, 15 D max equals 10 minus 10 D max or we have a total of 25 D max here uh, equals 10 or D max equals 10 over 25 is 0.4 so that is the maximum duty ratio that we can um, operate this converter at for the given turns ratios and from that we can calculate the output voltage so the output voltage is always um, N times the operating D times the current input voltage and for the maximum voltage output voltage condition VO max would be a constant N times D max okay. and in this case VN is always a constant of 100 volts so VN is um, uh, simply 100 volts okay. so VO max N so what is the N? Uh, N our definition is N secondary over N primary okay. so that is equal to in this case 5 secondary turns over 10 primary turns of so 0.5 so n is um, 0.5 d max we just calculated is 0.4 times 100 okay. so that, that gives us vo max to be 20 volts okay. so that is the answer to part a of this problem okay then uh, moving on part b requires us to calculate the voltage rating for this primary side MOSFET. Uh, we do have um, an expression for the voltage rating which is related to the input voltage and the uh, turns ratio and primary turn reset and that was uh, V switch rating equals V in max but in this case is constant V in so just V in plus uh, V in times the induced voltage on the winding Vn times N primary over N reset. So we are applying Vn to reset and we are re reflecting that to primary. So that would be Vn of 100 volts times 1 plus N primary over N reset that is 10 over 15. So that works out to be 166.67 volts and uh, as a check we know that um, Anytime the number of reset turns is more than primary, then the voltage rating will not be as high as two times V in, um, because you're going to be you're applying V in to the reset, and then when you 
transferred to the primary it is going to be less than the input voltage then 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 that gets added to the input so anyway so this is the voltage rating needed for the primary side mosfet okay so part c of the problem um, is to draw the waveforms of primary voltage inductor current uh, output capacitor current ic and the primary current i primary so knowing that uh, and all of these are to be drawn at the maximum output voltage condition for which we determined the um, the output voltage itself PO is 20 volts and the D max was uh, 0.4 okay so the first one is the V primary that is a simpler waveform to draw it's going to be positive and negative okay T in microseconds the switching frequency is 100 kilohertz so the period is uh, 10 microseconds the d is uh, d max which was uh, 0.4 so this would be 4 microsecond point okay so v primary during the on interval when the switch is on um, for a duration of 4 microseconds would be same as the input voltage so that would be v in then goes negative and like this okay now one good thing about operating at the maximum d allowed d max is that the um, this negative voltage v primary will persist till the end of that cycle um, if you're operating at d less than the d max then um, as soon as the core is fully reset or as soon as this area becomes equal to the positive area the voltage primary voltage um, as well as all the other winding voltages will jump from the negative value to zero so we will need to determine uh, the exact time which time at which it happens and so on so d max uh, uh, corresponds to um, it's much easier to draw the waveforms for d max um, okay that's zero v primary on interval is 100 volts and during the off interval it is minus 100 applied to the reset transfer to the primary so n primary over n reset is 10 over 15 uh, that is minus 66.67 volts that is just during the off interval okay? and v primary of course uh, v primary average of course is zero by volt second balance so that's one waveform the second when second waveform to be drawn is the inductor current il okay? so to draw the il waveform you know you need to know what is the average value IL or IL bar um, we already know that VO is uh, 20 volts um, therefore IO so this is equal to the for a forward or a buck converter is output output current inductor current is same as the output current in an average sense and that is equal to 20 volts divided by the output resistance of 1 ohms that's 20 amps okay. then we also need to know what is this delta IL for your forward and a buck the formula is vo times 1 minus d operating d ts over l and in this case vo is 20 volts 1 minus d max of 0 0.4 uh, we use d max we normally use d minimum but um, uh, we normally use d minimum to design the value of inductance but given that our operating condition is corresponding to d equals uh, 0 0.4 only then we need to use that specific value of d that's what i'm using here so 1 minus 0.4 times ts uh, frequency is given 100 kilohertz so ts is 10 microseconds divided by l which is given to be 50 micro henry so we'll put that here so that comes out to be 2.4 amperes So knowing this, we can draw the complete waveform of the inductive current. So four microsecond point, the complete period. Um, so it will be a rising slope during the on interval, falling slope during the off interval. The average IL bar is 20 amps and the 
peak value here is 20 plus 1 half of 2.4 so that's 1.2 20 plus 1.2 or 21.2 amps and this lowest point here would be 20 minus 1.2 or 18.8 okay that is the complete waveform for IL um, if you want you can also add delta IL is 2.4 Okay, so moving on to the next waveform, which is the capacitor current waveform. Its average should be zero, so it's going to have positive and negative. Okay. In fact, IC is um, for forward and buck is nothing but just the IL minus its uh, its DC value. Right? So it's just not going to have this uh, same slope, uh, rising slope here and a falling slope during the off interval, and it goes uh, the total delta i is still the 2.4 amps what you had for delta il and so therefore it starts from a negative 1.2 and uh, goes up to positive 1.2 for a total change of 2.4 okay i c is an ips all right i think the last waveform is the primary current waveform it's also going to be unidirectional my primary it's the four microsecond point and we know that during the off interval the entire off interval the primary current is zero okay. so it's going to jump at some value depending on where the secondary current starts it and then rises with actually two slopes one corresponding to the inductor current itself referred to the primary and the other one due to this magnetizing current so that would be the waveform for I primary. We need to figure out the two values. Call this as say I1, call this as I2. So I1 would simply be this um, inductor current or the secondary current referred to the primary. And note that N equals 10 over, uh, sorry, N equals 5 secondary turns over 10 primary turns or 0.5. So I1 would be this 18.8 times N, which is 0.5, um, and that is 9.4 amperes. Okay. And I2 would be this peak value, which is 21.2, referred to the primary, 21.2 times N. But not just that, we also have the magnetizing current. The magnetizing current, if I draw here, um, probably not to scale because it's going to be a very small component of the load current so this is your im or i mag starts with zero reaches an i mag peak okay. as i said it's slightly exaggerated it'll not be as big as what is indicated here okay so plus i mag peak okay. so let me calculate i mag peak right here peak equals so that is where this L primary is going to be used so what you're looking at is the current through this inductance when you apply 100 volts so the slope at which the magnetizing current rises would be the applied voltage divided by the inductance VL over L 100 volts divided by 600 micro that's the slope and this current rises for a total duration of this on interval which is 4 microseconds Cancel the micros, get 400 over 600 or uh, two thirds um, 0.67 amperes. Okay. Right, so substitute that here n is 0.5 um, plus a 0.67 gives you I2 of 11.27. Um, I2 is here, it's so 11.27 amps, and I1 is uh, 9.4. So that's the primary current. If you want, you can uh, actually you should uh, give the average value of I primary as well. Okay. What is I primary average? Um, Okay, so that will be I1 plus I2 over 2 over 2 
the whole thing multiplied by the degree ratio d 0.4 so basically the area of this trapezoid divided by the ts okay so that uh, comes out to be 4.134 amperes all right so that completes part c drawing all the waveforms and indicating all the required parameters so going back to the problem we have a part d which asks us to calculate the va rating for the secondary winding okay so let's uh, go to this okay so what we have drawn so far um, or determined so far is this load current was 20 amps uh, n equals 0 0.5 and d equals 0.4 so for VA rating, VA secondary rating, we need the V secondary rating and the V RMS current rating. V secondary rating, if you were to draw V secondary, it would be something like that. Oh, that's 4 micro, 10 micro. And this magnitude here is input voltage of 100 times n of 0.5 is 50 volts so v secondary rating would be positive volt seconds divided by ts positive volt seconds is right here this area that would be 50 volts times the duration of 4 microseconds divided by a total period of 10 microseconds um, gives you um, 200 over 10, 20 volts. That is the voltage rating of the secondary winding. Um, I secondary RMS. If you have to plot the I secondary uh, RM, I secondary instantaneous current, uh, I secondary versus T, would be doing the on interval. It has this current and no current at all doing the off interval. Um, so we can approximate this in order to easily calculate the RMS current as a, a horizontal straight line here, meaning neglect this peak-to-peak -peak variation and call this as uh, a constant and this magnitude here only during the on interval would be I out of 20 amps. Okay. This is 4 and that's 1 of 10 micro. Okay. Right, so I second the RMS is um, I O. It's basically I O squared times D. Uh, take the square root of the whole thing, or I O times square root of D. Uh, that'd be twenty times square root of D was 0.4 Okay, that works out to be an RMS current of twelve point six five amperes, and V A secondary rating would be this V rating, V secondary rating twenty volts times RMS current rating 12.65 of uh, comes out to be 253 VA. Alright, so that is part D and that completes problem 2.